From the beginning, we're excited uh, for to have you join us here today. Uh, we're talking about silver, uh, the tips and tricks uh, that we've got there, and uh, we're excited uh, to be to be doing this today. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind: uh, we do have both laser customers, um, as well as we do uh, Pulsar customers, uh, and so. As, you, as you're watching this training, if you're a, a laser uh, customer, we ask that you, you call into us. Uh, we'll give you some tips and tricks, and we can give you some personalized individual attention, uh, specifically on laser welding and how to work with it. Today, we're going to focus mostly on the pulse arc side. Uh, however, I will give some tips and tricks, and there's a section here about laser welding. So please tune in and listen. Um, those of you who don't have laser welders, it's, uh, it's good information both ways, um, and, and feel free to listen in. Uh, we're excited to work with silver today. Silver is one of our biggest metals. Uh, that, that we work with. It, it's one of the ones that, uh, the, the crowning metals that uh, brings the Orion uh, to the forefront, right? It's what it's good uh, at and what it does an amazing job. Uh, and so we want to make sure we showcase that. As we've done this training, we've tried to, to build up step by step and piece by piece um, by, by, by giving just what you need to know and then we'll kind of step by it and kind of going thoroughly. Uh, but as we get to this, tr this tutorial, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to cover in later lessons. Um, that we can we can go back and kind of uh, reiterate, but today we're kind of focusing on the metal and we're going to go through each of those sections. So for example, we haven't talked a lot about waveforms. Uh, today I'm not going to spend a lot of time on waveforms. I'm just going to specifically focus on silver and white, what, what the advantage is to that. Um, last week we talked about, uh, in episode 3, uh, electrode sharpening, uh, as well as the ignition options. And all of the information that you learned in that lesson, we'll be using again today. Uh, specifically using that truncated electrode um, and we'll go through that a little bit more um, but as well the ignition options uh, those those options work both uh, for working with gold with silver with steel it doesn't matter uh, it's more the joint type and how you're using that so the, we want to specifically emphasize that those trainings are very important that getting the machine set up and getting your electrode correct the argon gas flowing right and everything to your advantage the microscope focused uh, and all of those things are going to help you, as a user, be more effective uh, and, and, and to help and to solve a lot of your problems. Uh, and as we, as we keep that sharp electrode, as we work towards those goals that we talked about last week, uh, it'll help you uh, specifically with silver but as well with all your metals. Um, like I said, one of the reasons we want to jump into this training now uh, is specifically because we get a lot of questions about it. Uh, people use silver, people have difficulty with silver. And specifically, uh, laser welding is very difficult, uh, or more difficult, uh, to weld because of two reasons. And we're going to talk about that. The first reason that we want to talk about is uh, we got to understand silver and understanding its properties uh, and principles uh, that will help you learn how to weld it better, uh, with a laser or with a pulse arc. Uh, an interesting fact is that silver is the most reflective and as well the most conductive thermally and electrically of any metal on the planet. Uh, so it's very reflective, it's very conductive, and the heat likes to pull away from it. And that's one of the reasons why that laser welding it, it is making it more difficult. Uh, it acts just like a mirror, and as that laser light hits the surface of that uh, piece, it, it, most, of its, most of the energy and most of the light is reflecting off, and a bit of it's being absorbed. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But it's important as we work with the Orion to understand that the Orion doesn't work with light. It works with energy, with, with electricity. And so as long as it's conductive, which it's highly conductive, it makes the Orion an ideal candidate. Um, it's going to weld almost the same as it does with gold and silver, platinum, palladium. They weld very, very similar in, in the weld shape and the form that you can get. One thing I want to emphasize at this point is that when we talk about weld energy, uh, it, what we're talking about is, is basically the melt size. So how much of a size we get when, will melt when we create that electrode. That's kind of the power setting. Um, and so it's kind of, with a laser we can adjust individually, uh, we can adjust the spot size and the power. Um, on the Orions, uh, we, we, we don't have that uh, as much control over that. And so to get a smaller melt spot, we go down to smaller energies. And for a larger melt spot, we increase the size uh, of that melt spot as we increase the energy. So they're, they're, they're tied together. The bigger the spot, the more energy we want. And so as we mentioned, we need to increase the energy. What we're saying is we need to put more heat and a bigger spot into it. Uh, another thing to keep in mind when welding silver is that it's very mobile. So when, it, when, it, when we heat it up and it's at that molten state, it likes to move around really, really easily. 
And even to the point where even the argon gas flow, if we have it too high, it's mobile enough that even the flow of argon gas pressing against the surface will cause it to, to, to deform a little bit and won't give us that perfect weld. So we want to make sure that our argon gas is set. Back to that very weak one training. We're going to redo that one with a little better sound process, uh, but, but certainly something to keep in mind that your argon gas is set between that 8 and 10, and we're working with silver, maybe even just a titch on that low end. Right around that 6 to 8 range is a good range to start with. Today I've got my gas turned up a little bit high, and you'll hear it in the video, but the main purpose of that is so that you can hear the gas flowing and know that we've got that argon. You can see the tank over here uh, by the side of me here. Um, that's extremely important uh, to get good welds, to get a stable arc, um, and very important when working with silver. So we definitely recommend using argon in all of your welds, but specifically as we weld with silver today. Um, one of the major problems that you have because it's so mobile is that the tip of the electrode tends to, to want to force energy straight directly down into the piece. Um, what that does is as the, melt, uh, the molten pool is forming, the energy is forcing it down, creating a concave uh, crater or uh, gouge, if you will. And so as we weld, if we've got a really sharp electrode and our energy is turned up, so we've got a nice big melt spot, then as we hit that, what will tend to happen is it will actually create a bigger crater than we originally had. And so then you're, you're kind of chasing these craters around, and it's just pushing it into the metal, making these divots um, where the energy is being pushed. And so one of the ways that we want to we alleviate that is with that truncated electrode. And we'll go ahead and pull up that graphic here. And as you can see on the right-hand side, we've got, uh, we've got the standard electrode, and on the left-hand side, you've got the truncated. I may have those backwards. On the left-hand side is the regular standard electrode, and on the right-hand side is the truncated. And that gives you a feel of what we're looking to do. And again, when you're, form when you're forming that, you're just going to sharpen the electrode normally. And then we're going to just take it and, hit, and put the electrode directly down on the tip. So I've got here an electrode. And so I'm going to sharpen it as normal, like here. And then I'm going to take it and I'm just going to truncate it or cut off that tip of that electrode just a little bit. Um, depending on how much energy I want, right? So specifically with silver, if I, if I need a lot of energy and I want to make a big well, I've got a big thick piece of silver, then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be truncating this out quite a bit, uh, maybe up to about 80% of the total length of where your uh, sharpening point is. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to spread that energy. It's not going to punch it as hard right on the surface of the metal, but it's going to more spread that out and allow it, it to heat a wider range of area, but still give you the weld and the melt size that you need. Um, if we're making really small welds, uh, really small like a fine chain or a uh, box chain, uh, that, what that will do, you can almost use a sharp electrode because uh, we're, not, we're not adding very much energy and so it's not pushing very much. So depending on the thickness of the silver is in relation to how the amount we truncate that electrode. Um, and we talked a little bit about that and we had some <laughs> questions about that, how much to, to truncate it. And it's really a direct correlation to the amount of energy or melt spot that we're putting into that, how much melt we want. So we want a lot of melt, we want to turn that up, and we want to truncate it a lot. If we want just a little bit of melt, then we want to make sure it's just a little truncated or even sharp and uh, at very low energies, and then uh, that'll give us a, a more desired result. Uh, if, we're try if we have it really truncated at like 80%, and then we're trying to weld something really fine, it's going to be spreading out and it'll, it'll tend to melt around the piece more than it will very specifically where you want it. And so the more precise you want uh, to be, the more sharp your electrode should be with silver specifically. Um, one thing I want to mention here, uh, as we're going through this, uh, there's a couple of things you got to keep in mind, right? Silver is a wide range, and when we use the word silver, it, it can mean a whole lot of things. Right? It can mean a, an alloy that's mostly silver, uh, or it could be all the way to fine silver where it's, it's majority of it is silver, uh, a very high purity silver. And so as you're welding with your piece, you want to keep in mind that the, each of those are going to weld just a little bit different. Now with the Orion, we can weld any type of silver, uh, but there's a couple of things you want to be aware of. Uh, and one of those is zinc. Uh, the metal, uh, so s silver specifically, melts at about 980. Uh, approximately C is the melting point. So that's about where the metal begins to come and turns into molten. And then on the inverse side of that, 
you've got 2160 is about where it turns, where it begins to boil uh, and then becomes unstable. Uh, with zinc, it's much, much lower than that. It about, it, it, it's very low. And so what happens is as the welder is welding and it's, it's, these metals are experiencing very high heat, that zinc tends to boil off. And that's where we get that impurities and the blackness in our weld. Uh, and it's very important uh, to, to keep in mind that the higher the zinc content, the more uh, of that weld you're going to get. A lot of that blackness, a lot of that soot, um, and as well it's going to give you a more and more poor weld. Um, that works a lot, uh, is more applicable to brass specifically because there tends to be a higher zinc content in brass, but silver, uh, some certain silvers certainly have a high zinc content, so be aware of that. But if you're working with uh, argentium or sterling or fine silver, uh, all of those, uh, you, won't, you will notice very little difference between the three in the welding process. Uh, simply just a little bit more blackness on the weld. Uh, but the type of silver is very important. Uh, as you look at your piece, you want to identify, is it plated in silver? Is it solid silver? Was it plated in gold? Uh, was it plated, is it zinc filled, uh, pop metal, or, uh, you know, is it, what type of metal is it? Um, or is it uh, rolled? Uh, is it filled? Uh, where, it, you know, where it was a, a brass tube with, filled with something, and all of those are important. Uh, obviously, the best weld is gonna, you're going to get is from a solid, uh, f not filled, not plated, 100% silver uh, through the joint will, be, it will give you the best results. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I invite you to please chat them in. Ask, uh, ask us um, on the chat here. We've got some rep representatives watching that uh, as well, and they'll go ahead and, and answer. We're going to get through the training just like we did last week, and we're going to go ahead and answer the questions at the very end. Um, uh, there will be some people who, if they can answer it via chat, they're going to do that. Uh, but f please, feel free to answer questions um, as we go uh, and enter them, and then we can go back and kind of touch through those questions. Um, another thing to, to keep in mind that we get a lot of is I get a lot of users, uh, specifically welding silver, who <laughs> tend to think that silver solder is where they want to be. Uh, when you're working with a welder, the word solder and welder never mix. Uh, never once will you use solder, ever. Um, and if you're trying or attempting to weld with solder, you're, you're going to have horrible, terrible results. So anytime you work with a welder, you want to work with pure metals, pure wire of the same material. So in this case, if you're working with argentium, uh, you want an argentium wire. If you're working with fine, you want to work with a fine wire. Um, one of the tricks or tips that, that uh, some of our users is they actually recommend using a fine silver when working with any type of silver. Uh, that high purity of silver will help to add and help it be a, a little bit more cleany uh, and mix well with all of the other silvers and, and you can get a little better results uh, with that fine silver. Um, but it's certainly important to understand that never are you going to try and add solder. Uh, the solder's melting and boiling temperature, just like zinc was, is very low and so the welder will just blow it up. Um, and so as you're looking at your piece and as you say you're doing a ring resize, you want to ensure that you're not trying to weld on a previously soldered joint. Um, that's very important. Um, if you're trying to weld where, there, where there's solder, you're going to get the same result as if you added solder to the weld. Um, and it's going to give you very poor results and really be very difficult. Um, and so you want to avoid uh, sections that were previously soldered together in that spot. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you absolutely have to, you absolutely want to, and that's the only place you're going to be able to do it, is right where there's that solder line, you have to do it. Um, you can certainly turn the power up to get a bigger spot or melt size, and you can melt that and just continue to hit it over and over and over again, and that solder will continue to boil off and boil off and boil off, and as you work back and forth continuing to just hit it and hit it and hit it, eventually that solder will boil off and you'll be left with a, a more clean, uh, a more pure silver. And then from there, you can then complete your resize and add the wire you need to. Um, but it certainly, it's going to be a lot more work and a lot more difficult for you. So if you can avoid working with the solder joints, then, then that's recommended. Um, another thing to keep in mind is the strength of the joint. Uh, how much strength do you need out of this? I mean, is this a really fine chain that's uh, very delicate and the rest of the chain doesn't have a lot of strength? Um, you're probably not going to need a huge amount of strength on that side. Uh, and at the same time, uh, if it's something like a cufflink or a big thick chain or a ring where you need a lot of strength, uh, you have to keep that in mind and, and your technique is going to be different depending on the strength you need. Uh, one of the tricks that we've seen uh, used is definitely the, what kind of mechanical strength you can get. 
For example, if I took a cuff link and I was going to weld it, right? I've got my flat piece and I've got my, my piece here. And if I just took them like this and then I just welded along that edge, right? Um, what I'm going to get is I'm, I'm going to get a decent weld and you'll be able to see it from the outside. But if I take that and I want to uh, attempt to like shear it off with some shear force, um, it's going to break pretty easy because that weld right there is pretty small in comparison to the length, uh, the total length uh, of that cuff link. Um, and so one of the methods that we re recommend is, is to actually take the cuff link and then drill a hole and, and countersink, if you will, all the way through if possible into that joint and then weld it on this flat point. So if this is my cuff link and I press that through, I'm going to be welding it on this side. Then I'm going to place whatever I'm going to put over the top of that, whether it be a logo or uh, a stone or, uh, or even just polish it on that side. And then I've got the mechanical strength that the, that, that uh, base brings to me. And I don't even need to weld it on this side. So it, not only do I get a more desirable result, but I also get the strength uh, of the mechanical strength. And so specifically when working with silver, when possible, you want to use as much mechanical strength as we can. We want to get it, give ourselves as much benefit as possible and, and, and provide as much strength mechanically before we can even weld it. Um, and the tighter that fits, the better. And that works the same for your uh, resize. Um, if you're doing that resize the same, you want to make sure that we get a good tight joint. If our joint's uh, off or uh, sideways here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a little pocket in there. And as we weld it, it's going to have a little bit of a groove. And so one thing I, I want to show this right here, we're going to go ahead and cut over here to this camera. If you can see on this weld here, specifically this weld, this was a, a ring that I previously welded um, and just hit it on the outside. So you can see it's a pretty thick silver band here. Um, and as you can see right here, I didn't get full penetration. You can see the top of the weld here and you can see the bottom weld but then there's this section in the center here. You can see this line that, that goes through the center of it and what that is is that's a section of the metal that didn't actually weld because my weld spot from the top melted through there and the, top, and the weld spot from the bottom uh, melted through there and in the center here there was no weld um, and so this gave us that uh, a little bit of a, a weak joint because we had a, a pocket in the center. Um, and this is due to the fact that this is a very thick piece. Uh, one trick that you can use um, is you can actually chamfer the edges. And so if you can see on this ring here, uh, this is uh, obviously a pretty heavily chamfered, uh, just to give you the, the, the feel of what a chamfered edge looks like better. Um, I overemphasized it here. Uh, but you can certainly see that what I've done is I've kind of shaved these edges off and brought the ring down to a point. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to fill um, as we make our weld down here in the center, we can, it'll allow us to fill that piece up and then we can continue to fill the rest of this wire uh, with the rest of this with wire. And we're going we're gonna to weld, 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 add wire until we build that up and over the top of the ring and then we're going to polish that smooth. And that way we know we've got a good weld that's solid metal all the way through that piece. Not just, uh, not just a superficial weld, but we can get a, a, a weld all the way through it. Um, some other considerations uh, as you're working with silver um, is, to, is to understand that uh, is the piece going to be cleaned or polished? Has it already been cleaned and polished? Um, with the Orion that's not as important. Uh, you can certainly weld without cleaning it. Uh, the weld's just going to boil off that impurity and won't give you any trouble. Um, and same with polish, right? You can, it can have been polished and the welder's going to react the same to the metal either way. Uh, those surface things aren't going to be a big deal. So we don't need to su be super worried about it. Um, but specifically with the laser welder, um, you want to make sure that it's as rough as you can get it. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, but we don't want to polish it before we laser weld it, or uh, even clean it for that matter. Uh, the surface uh, contaminations can benefit. Um, and then obviously that next question, are we going to want to laser weld this, or are we going to want to pulse arc weld this? Um, for us here at Orion, the way we see the world is that we've got three main uh, methods in jewelry. You've got the laser welder, We've got the pulse arc welder, and we've got the solder um, and the torch. And, and each of those have unique uh, attributes. Each of them have pros and cons. Um, and so ultimately, the, the, the most ideal setting is going to be that you will have all three of those. Um, and there are certain jobs that the Orion pulse arc welder is going to be ideal for. 
and there's jobs that a laser is ideal for, and there's jobs uh, that, is, that soldering with a torch is, depending on your skill level, is way easier for. Um, and, and by no means am I saying that the Orion is going to replace that or the laser is going to replace that. Um, what, what I'm saying is that they each kind of cross over. They each do similar things, but each has their benefit. Um, and so the Orion's pulse arc welding side is specifically uh, geared and beneficial to welding the silver. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to do a couple welds here. Uh, just to give you a feel, I've got a couple big thick rings. We're going to make some welds here. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to get a, a feel and a sense of what we're trying to do. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to just hammer them and beat them and try and show some strength. Um, we may not get perfect strength, right? Just like you won't, may not get perfect strength. Um, and we're more just talking technique and understanding and, and methods to make, your, uh, make it easier for you. So we're going to go ahead and cut back here. And I'm going to go with that chamfer green here. Right now I've got my welder set, and we can go to that uh, real quick. Right now I've got the welder set at about 30 watt seconds. Um, that's just a that's just a, a ballpark range for for this thick of a piece. If I've obviously got a much smaller piece, I'm going to be going down a little bit lower. Um, you can see I can go all the way down on this machine. It goes very very small. This is the I series. Um, this is the 200 I2. Um, this is the the top of the line unit that we sell here. Um, but you can see it goes down to 0.001, uh, which is very small, one one hundredth of a watt second. So very, very small. The S goes to one watt second, uh, and the C goes to three, uh, and the M pulse goes to five. Um, and so depending on where you're at, that's going to change what you're doing here. For me, I, I like to start with this bigger, thicker piece. I'm going to start at 30. Um, one thing to keep in mind, uh, specifically as we work with this, is our weld length. And this may be difficult to see because of the microscope in the way, uh, but here you can see it says 15. And, it, and that's at 29.5. If I just slightly increase this, right, 29.9, I got 15 milliseconds. So what that means is that my weld energy is going to be 30, but my weld time is set at 15 milliseconds. Um, one of the tricks with silver is to specifically is to increase that, increase uh, your weld length to get a, a, a longer weld length. Um, and so it, as you can see here, if I, dump, if I go to silver uh, and I go one click higher to 30, right, and now I only went one, right, as I'm here, I hit 30, and I suddenly jump from 15 to 60 milliseconds. So I'm getting four times the length when I when I'm simply moving between 30 to t from 29.9 to 30, and so you want to be uh, you want to be aware of those lines on your grid, and the S has the same thing. As it goes up, the Orion automatically is going to adjust those lengths. So I'm going to go as low as I can, but still keeping that 60 uh, milliseconds. So we can see here, and just like we discussed in our last train, in a previous training, I've got my wire uh, twisted together. So I've got two on one side because I'm working with this big piece, and you can see it twisted together there. And on the other side, I've got a single strand. Um, and so, you, as you can see here, I, I can work with the single strand, or I can work with the double strand. So right now, I'm going to work. Uh, I'm just going to attach this. Uh, together and so I want to make sure that I've got my grounding clip attached. Um, you can see it there. I've just got it attached. We have several different grounding options, um, but what's important here is we want to make sure we put we have good pressure pushing the joint together. Um, that will certainly help us to to get a better weld um, and as well to 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 get that joint tight. So as I press here, I'm going to place a weld right on the edge here, and you can see that uh, that's just a single weld. You can see that's about what the what what. Uh, uh, 30 watt second, 60 millisecond weld is. Uh, again, I'm in classic mode. I'm going to stay in classic mode today. Um, we have some other options on the I specifically, and we'll talk about those. They're triangle and square wave. Um, they're a little bit more advanced, uh, but certainly a, a wonderful ad uh, addition to the uh, Orion line. I'm going to go ahead and finish welding this across. You can see there that uh, the, where the material is really thin, it actually kind of pulled it across, and that's okay. We're not too worried about it because what we're gonna we're gonna come back and add it again. So you can see I want to kind of create that uh, gouge a little bit, but I'm just making sure I got 
I'm spreading it across uh, that weld joint. Now when you're working with silver, silver welds better warm than it does cold. And so you want to make sure that you're, you want to try and avoid stopping as much as possible. And specifically stopping uh, to, for no reason if you don't have to. So I'm going to, now I'm bringing my wire in here and I'm just going to be adding the material right on top of that with this big chamfer we've got created. You can see that I set the wire right next to it and then I touch the electrode to the piece and pull that wire across. And I'm just kind of moving the metal around as I'm going. And on this edge here, you can see I need to put a little bit more material there. So I'm going to touch right there, and you'll see I added that material. And then I can just simply break it off. That way I know what's, what's attached and what's not. I'm going to do it again, breaking it off. And we're just slowly adding more and more material. So you certainly want to just be patient. Don't worry about the number of welds, that's not important. What's important is that we're getting the material where we want it and that it's that our joint is strong and easy. I'm going to touch, now just kind of moving that metal around. Again, I'm going to rotate the ring here. I'm right-handed, so I like to have my wire in my right hand. Some people prefer it the other way, but certainly feel free to do it whatever feels comfortable to you. There's no right or wrong. I'm going to bend this. You can see i got a good attachment here. That wire doesn't want to bend, break off, so I'm going to just keep going. You can see I, I've left that, and I'm just going to keep working that piece. You can see it blobbed it up. I'm just going to keep going, adding that material. As you can see, that with this thick of piece, I want. it's important that two pieces help me add material a lot quicker uh, than if I use the single side. Um, and so it's definitely a trick to help you uh, to save time with one single wire and only having to buy one thing you can get the, the benefit and use of both sides but you can see I'm just gonna keep adding across the top now I'm just gonna cut the wire here using the machine I'm gonna touch it right on the tip and you'll see it cut off like that again going back we'll just keep adding We're just slowly filling in that joint. Like I said, I overemphasized on this particular ring that we're welding on now. Um, and that's okay. We can obviously just add more, so don't be worried when you're getting your chamfer just right. As you can see, the, the, the weld doesn't necessarily want to flow really well into that. Um, I've kind of created this tall piece, and I'm just kind of melting it through. That's all right. We're going to go back through, and we're going to increase our energy, and we're going to weld it through. Now when you're working with silver, it will get pretty high, um, the, the piece will get hot, and so you want to make sure that you're careful um, with your fingers. And make sure you're holding it in a place that's not going to burn you, um, as well that uh, the wire itself. If I were to hit the wire uh, specifically, then it's going to heat that wire up pretty hot, um, and it, it will burn me. Uh, and so you want to just be careful. Make sure that you're, you're touching where you want to touch and that as the piece begins to warm up slowly, um, that uh, it's comfortable. Like I said, you can use any type of grounding clip. We have a couple different options that will help you. Um, you know, certainly you can hold the piece here on the, uh, on the clip where it's plastic and, and then you're not affected by the heat. Um, or you can use, um, we have a... Uh, we have our tweezers here, so our camera gets back in focus. Sorry, apologize, the camera just, I'm working so tight here, there we go. And so we've also got this 
uh, this is our crosslock tweezer. Comes with the unit as well. And you can see I can hold the piece. I can hold the crosslock um, on both sides um, of the crosslock, and then kind of pinch it across. That's a good way to keep your fingers protected. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and increase my energy. I'm going to go up by about 20, uh, 15 to 20. So that's going to put me at between 45 and 50 watt seconds. That's a pretty high weld. Um, and the main purpose of this is just to kind of smooth that big pieces that I've created out. And it's always okay. It's okay. We can always add more material. Um, we can, you know, we want to just make sure we get it good and pushed down in the bottom. Um, another trick to work with as you're working with silver uh, to keep in mind is um, that you want to uh, not, not allow that piece to cool. And as well as you're working, you can just take your thumb like that and slide that blackness off. Um, obviously, you, you're welcome to use the, the provided uh, fiberglass brush. Um, and that's useful to have handy. Uh, I like my finger because obviously I'm just I'm using it. I get a little black on my finger; it washes right off. Um, and as you can see, we're getting a good push here um, on that on that metal. Uh, but technique here: I'm trying to touch right on the edge of where I want it to move. So, for example, on this big piece, uh, you can see if I turn the ring just right that I've got kind of a blob right there. And so I'm gonna. I'm going to touch the piece, right, uh, the electrode, right not on the top, but on the edge of it, kind of uh, towards the side of this blob, and I'm going to pull that blob down towards the piece. And you'll see there it's kind of spread it out. Adjust the camera here, just trying to get the perfect view for you. So you can see that. Now I'm going to do the same thing on top. I'm just going to keep welding right around the edge here, I'm trying to keep that uh, piece from uh, 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 trying to move that blob down and, and, and push it down. Now that I've got it kind of pushed around, I can hit it right on top and push that, continue to kind of move that down. And I'm just kind of spreading it out. And it's okay if, you're, if it's not perfect. Obviously, we're going to. Uh, we're going to polish this and we're going to uh, continue to move, but what you'll see is that the metal will continue to move and you can see here that I'm kind of creating a little bit of a crater. So as I weld, I'm actually pushing the metal away from the wet side of the weld and we get a result that's probably less desirable. So that's when we want to truncate. And this piece is pretty warm um, and so it's welding a little bit different, but you can see that doesn't look pretty and that's okay. Uh, at this point, we're not necessarily trying to, to get a perfect weld. We're going to polish this. We're going to uh, uh, use our polishing techniques uh, to get that perfect. But right now, we're more worried about the strength of the weld. So we'll go ahead, and, and, and this is obviously not finished. I've only welded one side, um, and it's a very thick piece of silver. Um, I'd say it's probably about an eighth of an inch. Um, and so we'll cut back to here, and I'm just going to, just to give you a feel, um, the, the strength of this joint isn't, isn't tremendous. Obviously, I could get a whole lot more. I could continue to weld, and we've only spent a few minutes, but I just wanted to just want to give you a feel uh, of what kind of strength. I've just got a little hammer, a little mandrel here, and I'm going to hit it right on the on that weld joint, um, and, and and just to try and give you a good feel of what uh, what we're looking at. So you can see I gave it a pretty good hit, not the hardest hit, but that weld held up perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit it down to kind of try and spread, just to show that spread joint. Um, and the spread strength here, and you can see I'm getting a pretty decent weld uh, down there. I've moved it uh, up a half size um, on this mandrel, and I'm going to go ahead and hit it again right on that. So now we've moved it from a six to an eight, and there we get. It. That's where the weld broke. Um, so I've thinned the metal out enough the uh, way we've got it down there, and then as well as I've welded that down. Now obviously you're not going to test your welds that way. I just want to show you the strength of the silver um, and specifically on this thick piece um, and that we weren't specifically working to get a uh, great strength. Um, I, obviously I could have done a whole lot more welds and added more material and finished that weld uh, but we get a pretty good amount of strength from that weld um, and, and it's pretty uh, pretty simple to do there. Um, now I want to talk a little bit uh, about specifically about tack mode. Um, on the Orion, they have tack mode. Um, what, it, what it's good for is for tacking pieces that, uh, 
before you permanently weld them. It's kind of a temporary weld that holds them into place. Um, but one thing to be aware of is that on the Orion, specifically working with silver, uh, tack mode isn't ideal for silver. Um, just as we mentioned before, it is very highly conductive electrically. Um, and the welder uses what, uh, uh, similar principles to a resistance welder. And so basically how, that, how a resistance welder works is as those two pieces are being pressed together, they don't perfectly line up. Um, the metal at a microscopic level has, level has peaks and valleys. Um, and so those metals don't perfectly line up. And so as we put pressure towards them, what we're going to do is we're going to apply energy at, through it. And the energy where, where those pieces are touching is going to heat up through the resistance. Um, the resistance in the electricity is going to heat up and then it's going to melt in those specific places and allow them to, to be joined into one piece. And that's important, um, you know, specifically seeing the steel is really easily welded, but because this is so highly conductive, the energy flows right through um, and doesn't create enough heat in that localized area at the energy settings we're used. Um, certainly we can uh, resistance weld uh, with, a, with a full resistance welder. We can resistance weld it, but on the Orion, they're not recommended that you try and tack that ring together with tack mode. You just aren't going to have a great success with it. So just be aware that silver is not necessarily great in tack mode. Um, uh, like I mentioned before, the longer the weld time, the, the smoother it works. And basically how this principle works is if you imagine that we're throwing a rock in a pond, uh, it's going to create ripples. And the longer that we allow that pond, the longer time that we allow that pond to, to even out, uh, right as soon as we throw that rock, obviously we're going to have a big flash and if we froze that pond that we threw our rock into, we would have a big splash um, and, and, and create a little bit of a crater. But if we allow that pond to, to, to settle a little ways and then we froze it, um, what we're going to see is that those, uh, that crater has allowed, been allowed to flow back in and flow together again um, and, and have much less uh, spots, much less ripples in that weld. And so the longer our weld time is, uh, it, it is similar to the longer that we allow that pool to freeze. If we imagine that uh, silver is liquid, just like water, um, at its liquid state, and we hit it with a weld and we only hit the weld very, very shortly, and that silver is only allowed just a millisecond to be liquid, it's going gonna, it's gonna to create that crater. So the longer that we increase that time, the better we can, uh, with the more smooth and uh, the smoother welds we'll get. One thing to be aware of is sometimes, obviously on the Orion, you can only adjust it up as high as you can. Um, and so there's different techniques that people use. Uh, some people will turn, will turn the power up and, and then down, decrease their weld length. Um, and some people will, will go with bigger welds. Um, it's important to understand that there's no wrong or right way to, to work with silver. And specifically, when you're talking such a broad subject, there's no magic uh, uh, settings that work. Uh, there's no numbers that you just type in and it, it works perfect. Uh, ultimately what you want to focus on is getting the results that you want uh, for your piece and that you're looking for. Uh, and so one, of the, one thing that we have some jewelers who, who use very little energy, who never get above 5 or 10 watt seconds. Uh, they don't want to add a, ton, a tremendous amount of heat and they, they want to just be very, very careful and very, very slow um, at heating the piece up. Uh, other jewelers like to hit it with tons of power, like I was hitting it with 30 plus, uh, up to 50, trying to, to, trying to smooth it out, and, and that's okay. Uh, it, it just depends on the technique. Some people believe that heats the metal too hot and you crystallize it. Uh, uh, other jewelers believe that you're, you're, if you're working too small and you're not getting enough melt to flow together and you're getting those pockets on the inside. So it really just depends on your trial and error. Everybody does it a little bit different. Uh, for me, I, like I said, I like a higher energy and I like to anneal the piece. Uh, and we'll talk about that. Um, so I think we've covered most of those. Um, make sure you have the right wire. Uh, I can't stress that enough. Here I, we're using a 28 gauge wire that I've spun together. We've got, there, there, obviously there's an infinite number of wires. You can draw your own wire. Uh, but uh, having the right wire is extremely important. If we're trying to use something that's not quite sure, you don't even know what it is, and you're getting poor results, chances are your wire is the problem. As we're trying to add that material in, we want to make sure that it's perfect um, and it's exactly what we need. And so uh, definitely check your wire. That's going to be a, a, a big thing. Uh, one thing that if I found is some people, uh, even with the 28 gauge wire, if they're adding really, really fine wire to like a chain uh, or even just like a really small rope chain 
and they're trying to add this 28 gauge wire, that's a bunch of wire. And so one method you can use is you can actually get your pair of pliers out and you can actually just squish and flatten the tip of that wire. That, that's going to flatten it out and give you less material. And then as you bring that flattened piece over and attach it, you can, you can add material, metals very, very smallly because we can get it as thin as a paper um, and just add just a little bit of metal by flattening the tip of that wire out. Um, Silver is obviously easy to do because it's pretty soft so we can just flatten it down and add that. So if you need really fine precision adding, you, you can certainly squish the end of that wire and that's very helpful. I want to talk a little bit about the basics of welding with the laser. Obviously I don't have a laser set up here, I'm not going to be doing a lot of uh, demos on the laser, but some tricks to keep in mind um, with the laser is obviously we want to try and uh, cut down on the amount of reflectivity in that silver. So we want to try and rough it up a little bit. Um, you can use emery cloth, you can use a sandpaper, you could use a sandblaster, uh, but anything to rough that surface up so it's not shiny and mirror. If you've got it polished to a beautiful shine, then it's going to be shiny as a mirror and uh, most of that laser light is going to bounce off. So one of the techniques is obviously rough it up as best as you can. Um, and then as you're welding, the welder has a tendency, specifically when you use argon, to, to, to give you that finish. So as you make a few welds, it, it looks great and it's welding good, but then as, that, as the welder is making good welds, it's polishing or, or giving you that really fine finish. And so certainly throughout the welding process, you may have to, to, to go back and sand um, a little bit and, and rough that surface up again and again as you weld. And it can be kind of a pain, but it certainly um, is, is possible. Another method that, that's used is uh, the use of a magic marker or a sharpie. Um, in our laser welders, we have black crosshairs, um, and so a black sharpie or a black marker isn't necessarily recommended. As you've got a black surface that you're welding with black crosshairs, it makes it a little bit difficult. Um, so we recommend using a different color. Um, I mean, any color um, is it works well. Uh, obviously, the darker colors uh, are more difficult, uh, but a red or a blue uh, tends to be uh, very popular choices. Um, but certainly that way you can see where your crosshairs are and where the laser is going to hit, but you're not getting that hidden crosshairs as they hide in the blackness. Um, but the same idea works uh, with the pulse arc and the laser, and, and it may be of interest uh, and an advantage to heat the piece up a little bit. Uh, I mean, it's certainly not a, a not, not a difficult thing to do. Um, you could put it, in, obviously, in an oven and get it warm. You can heat it with a torch a little bit to get it heated up a little bit. And we're not talking that we want to take it way up high, but anything that is uncomfortable to the fingers is going to weld better than it is at cold or room temperature. So certainly warming that silver up works. Now, if, if you don't have that option or you don't want to worry about it, you can certainly just make more welds, um, right? I can make 10 or 15 welds over the top of it. It's going to heat that piece up nice and hot. And then I, as I begin to continue to weld, that piece is going to eventually reach that point where it's, the welds not, aren't going to add any more heat to the piece and it's going to cool to that same section. I'm continually adding heat, but it's cooling at the same rate. And so you can use the, the, the pulse arc welder or the laser welder to continue to heat it. And just keep in mind that your first 20, 15, 20 welds may not be perfect, but it'll begin to weld better as you heat it up. Uh, another cool feature on the Orion, specifically the 200i2. Now, not all our machines have this, but there's a seam mode. Uh, and a lot of jewelers, a lot of people are like, why in the world would I use seam mode? Uh, it's up to 30 welds per second. It's a solid beam, like a similar to a traditional TIG weld. Um, and a lot of people are like, I'm, I'm welding this fine, delicate stuff. Why do I ever need this crazy, high, powerful weld? Um, and one of the advantages of the seam mode is we can actually heat with it. Um, and so you can turn that weld energy up, and it goes all the way down to one weld per second. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to create a pilot arc that's continuing to drive and then it's going to drive that one weld per second. And so it's, it has a continuous arc uh, of energy that's heating that piece up and then it's welding one weld every second. Um, and that's extremely, I mean, it, it heats up very, very quickly. Uh, just yesterday I was doing some welds, uh, doing some practice welds, and I turned it to seam mode, one weld per second. I hit the weld and sure enough, within less than half a second, my finger was burned. Uh, it, it's very quick. It, it, you can burn yourself very quickly on seam mode and specifically in some of the other settings. So I highly recommend to, to, to use pliers or, or gloves or something to, to shield that and to make sure your fingers are protected if you're using that seam mode or you're heating it up. Uh, but it certainly helps it weld better. Um, 
Another advantage when you're laser welding um, is you can actually just take your finger, just like I was doing with my thumb, is I can actually wipe it across the weld. And what that's going to do is going to take the oils and dirt off my skin and it's going to place it over the top of that reflectivity. And even just that little bit can be enough to help you to, to finish a job. Um, and so it, it obviously isn't a long-term fix, but if you've got only a couple more welds you're trying to smooth over the top, you can certainly just take your finger and rub that ring real hard and you'll get better results. You'll get a good solid mirror finish uh, and, and it'll allow that, that laser to, to work. And if you've never used a laser, you'll know what I'm talking about, but if you've never used one, basically what happens is as you're welding, the, the, the metal begins to kind of polish um, as, it, as it begins welding. And then it, it basically feels like the laser is turning off. You're hitting it with all the power, but it, it's not moving or melting any metal. It's just hitting it, toot, 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 and nothing happens. Uh, and so what, what's happening is a lot of that light's being reflected. Uh, a, a lot of that light can be reflected onto your arm or your hand. And so certainly with a laser, there are some precautions that you want to take and, and make sure that you're good there. Uh, another element with a laser that you want to make sure is you've got to make sure your laser has the power to work with silver. Uh, not all lasers have that ability. Uh, some of them are uh, obviously the, the more inexpensive ones that, we, uh, that have been created. Uh, they're very difficult to, to, even at high power, to weld silver. Um, with the Orion, you can weld silver with the M-Pulse. Um, I mean, that's a $2,000 welder. And you can get better results than I can with almost a $20,000 laser welder. Uh, and so something to keep in mind is some laser welders may not give you the capability to do all the work with silver that you want to, especially thick, big pieces. Uh, it's going to be difficult to weld with a laser. Um, and obviously, to compensate, they're turning up the energy. Uh, and if your energy only goes up so high, you may have difficulties. In the Orion line, we have one called the LZR60. Um, that's our smaller unit. Uh, and, and depending on the size of the silver you're working on, it may not even have enough power to work with it. Um, and that's certainly where giving us a call in and talking with us uh, can help you uh, to know if you're just spinning your wheels or if the machine has that capability. And we'll be happy to talk with you. We're not worried about upselling you. Um, there's other options out there, really inexpensive uh, silver options, like I said, with the impulse. And we can get you the capabilities and help you to, to get the welding you need. Um, as well. So just something to be aware of if you're looking at purchasing a, an LZR or any laser out there, if it's too small and you work a lot with silver, be careful. Uh, you want to make sure that, that machine has that capability. Um, and then same thing, you want to make sure with a laser you're using the right <coughs> wire. Um, a lot of our users use a variety of wires, but the one wire that I've kind of heard stick out there is a silver with about a 5% platinum. Um, and that, is, that, that, is, that allows for better adding and it cuts down the reflectivity just a little bit. Um, so again, if you can get wire in a 28 gauge uh, approximate, that silver wire with about a 5% platinum added to it, um, and a lot of these, uh, a lot of the jewelry supply companies can help you, uh, a lot of the tool guys, you can call in and ask them and they can get you the right wire. Um, but that's one specifically that I've heard has, people have had great success with when using on a laser. Uh, so it's just something to be aware of. Um, one of the biggest questions that I get, and I'm going to kind of shift gears back to the Orion and, and as well, uh, this kind of uh, goes to both Orion and laser, but one of the questions we get a lot is, my, my silver welds are super duper brittle. Uh, as I bring them together and I weld, uh, as soon as I put even just a little bit of hit into it, I get cracking. And, and, that, and that's normal. Um, and basically what, what it is, is because of silver has that ability to wick the heat away really quickly, right? The conductive heat, it's pulling the heat from the weld site and spreading it throughout the, that piece. And so what happens is we create that joint and we're welding across the top here, uh, the, what, the energy is flowing really, really quickly away from it. And so you don't get very far into that joint before it's, it's completely cold. It didn't, wasn't even affected by the weld because it wicked the heat away so fast. It pulled it away from the weld site. And so the, one of the ways to alleviate that is to anneal not only just the specific weld site, but as well to anneal further away from that edge on both sides. Um, now what we want to do is we don't necessarily need to be using 100% of the power in that center of that joint. But what we want to do is we want to just kind of feather it out. We want to, uh, we want to bring that energy down and kind of uh, step weld as we go out and do a row here. Um, at, at this energy, lower my energy just a little bit. And weld it again, again lower the energy, and what we're trying to do is just kind of taper that heat back. And so we're, we're spreading from a single line 
um, and spreading that heat transfer over that piece. And that can help you a lot with heat cracking. And that works with a laser as well. Uh, now if we've got a good hot piece, it may not be as important. Uh, but certainly if you're having problems specifically with brittle welds in silver, that can alleviate the problem a lot, is to be able to spread uh, those welds out and, and get uh, a good annealing across, a, uh, across that part. Um, again, uh, C mode, some people will finish their welds in, in the standard weld, and then on the I2 they'll come back in C mode, and they'll just C mode all over that, uh, all over the top, and, and what that's doing is just adding a ton of heat and trying to spread that heat um, and evenly disperse it so you don't get any uh, you know, cold weld or cold joint spots uh, that, that we make sure we get a good hard solid weld. Um, and I'll mention, like I said before, uh, if you're good at a torch and it's something you do every day, you're probably not going to take a big thick silver shank and try and resize it on a Ryan. It may not be what it's used for. Uh, it may not be its perfect opportunity. Uh, however, uh, you can certainly, if you don't have the capability to solder, uh, it, that's great, or as well as if you're just trying to fill a pit and you don't want to pickle or you can't take the stones out or you don't want to take the stones out, uh, the Orion can certainly be uh, an advantage. And so I'm not, we're not definitely not saying every ring you resize has to be in silver now. Um, certainly if, you, if you're good with a torch and you can resize, then continue to do it the way you're doing it and add uh, the Orion to the things like re-tipping a prong or uh, you know, filling a pit. That, that's where it's going to be uh, more beneficial to you. Um, you want to, uh, one thing is to increase the power after you've got that joint. Same thing, same idea, right? We're going to make some small welds to, to create our joint, and then we're increasing our power up to get a bigger spread across the top and get more heat spread across that whole joint. Um, but as you can tell, um, as I mentioned, as I talked through these settings, there is no perfect answer. And, and if I had anything to say to anybody I'm training, that's always the first question that I want to make sure, first point that they understand. There's no perfect settings when you're working with the Orion. I get uh, at least a customer a week who calls in and says, hey, what's the settings I need to use for, for this ring, right? And I'm, there's just so many questions, right? How thick is the shank? How big is the ring? You know, what materials is it plated? What joint type? I mean, are you looking at how much strength you need? All of those questions that we asked in the beginning, they're going to all change the weld settings, and they're all going to be different. Uh, but the, the beauty of the Orion is there isn't necessarily one weld setting that's going to work and the rest of them aren't going to work. Um, but basically we can spread that out. Um, we can try, you know, more time and less energy or more energy, less time. There's no perfect answer. Um, there's no perfect setting. That's exactly why we don't hand out a setting sheet that says these are the perfect settings to use, right? We give you some starting points and, and that can be helpful. Uh, but certainly don't, don't rely on the basic mode or rely on what I tell you uh, or anybody tells you. Uh, you know, experiment. Try increasing the energy by 10%. Decrease it by 10%. And really play around with those settings. That's, that's, that's the only way you're going to really learn and, and understand how to use the machine to where then you can tell me what the settings are. Say, I love these settings. This is what I do and it works perfect. And I, I know when I hear an Orion user say that, that they know how to use their machine, that they're utilizing it and they're really understanding it. So if I can say anything to anybody who's listening and really wants to get good at using the Orion, it's practice. Practice, practice, practice. You're not going to pick up a ring. You're not going to push two buttons on the machine. It's going to make perfect welds overnight. It just isn't going to be. You've got to learn it just like any tool. If I take a tool, I've got to learn how to use that tool to be good at it. Uh, just today, I'm not a jeweler. I don't specifically work in jewelry. Um, but I was using the jeweler saw to cut some of these rings down. It was very difficult for me. I don't do it every day, and so I'm trying to hold the ring, and many of you who are experienced in jewelry will understand that. But I'm trying to hold that ring just right and not cut my finger and get a good joint and not scratch it up. It, it, it made me realize I need much more practice using a jeweler saw. And the same goes for the Orion. You, it's never going to be easy. It's not going to just be a perfect setting. It's going to take time. It's going to take practice. It's going to take some work. Um, but we can certainly help you along the way with these trainings and, and anything we can do, please call in and we'll help you get the settings that we use and give you some tips and tricks and, and, and the stuff we've talked about today can certainly help as well. Um, next week we're going to be talking a little bit, uh, we're going to shift gears from jewelry. We've kind of focused a lot on jewelry in, uh, in the first sections, um, but once a month we're going to do a training on a, an application outside of jewelry. Um, so next week we're going to be talking specifically about mold and dye repair. Um, that certainly doesn't mean if you're a jeweler to tune out, 
Uh, a lot of the principles and techniques will be great. There'll be you know, big heavy pieces and we're adding wire and adding uh, margins. Uh, they're also a great way to add some revenue to your source. Uh, by using the Orion, we can certainly, uh, you can begin to repair some molds. Um, if you're not interested in that at all, then you can certainly repair your own tools. Um, if, you, if your hammerhead breaks off, you can certainly repair it with the Orion. It, if you've got a, an anvil and it breaks in a section, we can certainly uh, weld that as well. And so there's some great information for everybody uh, included in that, and that'll be what we're going to be talking about next week. Uh, Scott uh, will be back uh, next week. Um, my name is Thane. I apologize I didn't introduce myself. Uh, I've been here at Orion about four years, um, and I've worked uh, in a variety of different applications. So we do a lot of uh, a lot of different things from industrial clients to medical, dental, um, all the way to jewelry. And so uh, we've kind of geared these more towards jewelry because that's uh, uh, the, where the need of the training is. But we're certainly going to vary the, the trainings and, and try and cover all of those areas. So please tune in and try and get as much as you can, ask questions. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and see if there's any questions that need to be answered here. Hi, Dean. So, so we, we have, have a couple questions, questions that, um, that were chatted, chatted in. The, the first, first is from Anna. Anna. And she wants to know, should you be cleaning the ring in between the wells? The ring looks pretty dark as silver is building up. Sure, sure. So they, uh, as that blackness builds up on the top of the ring, what, we, what you tend to get is you can actually, if you hit right on top of it, you can actually start to mix that in. Now, obviously, most of it's on the surface and most of it's going to blow out. I apologize, we lost our camera here. But that's something to keep it, uh, it's a great question, and uh, it, you certainly can, it doesn't hurt. Um, the reason why I don't like to clean, uh, to stop and clean it off every single time um, is simply because I want to retain as much heat as I can. So you kind of want to play a balance game there. You want to you want to add it, you want to make sure we're, you're not stopping to get a ton of, where you're stopping the heat build up, but at the same time we're not getting it so dark, you don't know what you're doing, and you're adding more, uh, you know, contamination to that well. So certainly using your thumb or having that brush handy, it, it certainly isn't a problem, but you don't have to. All right, and one, one last question is from Marcuso. What, what is the minimum, minimum length of the electrode? electrode? Okay, so the minimum length that you can get the electrode down to um, is what I'm going to assume the question is. So basically as you're sharpening the electrode, it's going to get down really, really, really short and eventually that's the minimum length. And what that, what that length is going to be is in my electrode here, if I pull this out, eventually the electrode's not going to be able to be gripped in here and stick out of that electrode, uh, out of the stylus holder. And so if I put this in right now, right, if that electrode was that short, you can see that it doesn't stick out. And so once you, once you get to the point where it, it pulls into the cup and you can't, it's, it's attached as far out as you can get it and it's barely sticking out, that's when it's time to replace that electrode. It's time to get a new one. Um, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I've worked here four years, I've never seen an electrode get so short that you can't use it. Uh, like I said, a lot of times I'm using them and I end up losing them, or I, I, you know, we put them in a, a, we put a bin together that's got about 20, a uh, piece of foam or something that we've stabbed the electrodes into, Now we're just pulling one, we use one, but we've got about 20 in the rotation, and so it takes a long time to do that with one electrode. So if you're just using one, it, it may, it, you, know, you may get there, but it's certainly not something that happens very, very quickly. Um, but yep, as soon as it can't stick out of the electrode, it's the best option. All right, that looks like all the questions for now. Thanks, Thanks Dean. Dean. Yeah, and we appreciate, once again, uh, you viewing. And if you have any continued questions, we'll leave the feed open. Uh, comment there. We'll leave it open for about five or ten minutes. Um, and then, uh, as well, feel free to email us. We'll, our contact information will be there. Um, our goal is to, to, to help you. And so if any of your questions or any of this is complicated or didn't make sense or I did something wrong or you wanted to give me some pointers, by all means, I'm open and uh, I, I'm not perfect and I'm not great, but I, I'm here to help and we're all here to help here at Sunstone and Orion. And so uh, we appreciate you joining and uh, good luck welding.